Who better than a home inspector to tell us how to keep rainwater out and away from our house? Jessica Lawton of Techna House Inspection says it starts with your roof. Well, the majority of roof leaks, they actually occur around your roofing penetrations. So, you know, around your chimney, the chimney flashing there, that's what's called surface applied flashing. That relies heavily upon a bead of caulk right where the brick touches the metal. This product, um, there are others like it. You're looking for a type of caulk that can be applied in colder weather, in wet weather. This can be applied directly onto a wet surface. So um, I have used a product like this similarly on my roof to actually recaulk around the, um, the flashing there. So if you're worried you have an older roof, it's probably if you can safely get up onto your roof after the snow melts, before the rain comes, it might be a good idea to go up and re do some caulking around the roofing penetrations. Your gutters are your first line of defense and before the weather hits, you have to clean them out. One of the easiest things you can do is to pick up um, downspout extenders. These come in a bunch of different colors. They're about eight bucks a piece at Home Depot, Lowe's, big box stores. And they extend out, they extend, you know, about six feet in length. What you do is you're gonna hook this on to the bottom of your gutter, and you're just gonna extend this out into your yard to move all the water as far away from the house as possible, all right? Okay. Um, the next thing you wanna do is you always wanna use a splash block. This is what's called a splash block. It's designed to keep leaves and grass cutting, snow and things like that. If this was just sitting in your yard, it could get plugged up with snow and ice. This is designed to help keep that from happening, to just direct the water so the water can move as far away from the house as possible. Our final tip of the day to make sure your house is dry is to buy an insurance policy of sorts. Now, Jessica Lawton of Techna House Inspection says first, make sure your sump pump works. And what you can do, this is a pretty standard model. A lot of them have a float similar to this. You're just gonna lift the float which should trigger the pump, you hear the click, yeah. should trigger the pump to come on and you should hear it run. It'll pump that water out and away and outside your house. So first things first, make sure it's working. This is your primary pump. This is your insurance policy. This is your insurance policy. This is a pretty inexpensive model. This is a battery powered backup pump. So in the event that your primary pump fails, the only way you're going to find that out is now you have a basement full of water. So what you do is you set up a backup powered pump. This pump, this system comes with a smaller pump. This is a smaller pump that you will set at a higher level inside of your sump pump and it will only kick on if your primary pump fails. So in the event of a power outage or this pump simply stops working.